Um, there's a wonderful idea that Karl Marx introduces uh, back in the 19th century. The point about that the dominant ideas in any society essentially are the ideas that represent the ideology and interests of those he described as the ruling class. Then, in a South African context, the trade union library in Cape Town puts it differently. Information is rather too important to leave to the bosses. In the context of the global crisis that Brian has just described, It's marketing, guys. In the context of the global crisis that Brian has just described, what is going to be the role of the media? What is going to be the role of information? And I think for us to be able to march more usefully, to march more systematically and progressively locate the role of the community media sector. We have to think we have to think about the role of the community media sector in this in terms of these critical points that both Marx and the Trade Union Library put forward. I'll come back to those points in the in the conclusion. The second thing which I want us to think about is the state, the South African state. As much as it is a democratic state, a legitimate, acceptable to society, but I think there are worrying features that community media people, community media activists have to think about. There's a strong streak of what I would refer to as authoritarian populism. Populist in so far as it may appear in form as representing popular interests, the concern about crime, Malula going on, and so on. At the same time, within that populist concern is laden, is hidden, a rather worrying anti-democratic perspective. Who's getting blamed for crime? In this London yesterday, in its camp, 77-year-old woman gets killed because of allegation she's a witch. There have been a spate of crimes in the midst camps of informal settlements. But now, uh, this populism does open the door to that kind of vigilance. <coughs> Even this proposed amendment to the Criminal Procedure Act, what message does it send to society? And in the context of an economic crisis that Brian has described, we're likely to see the deepening of crime in fact. What authoritarian features, therefore, are going to get reinforced in the state? What challenge does that pose to those who seek to cover the state from the perspective of ordinary people? There are sorts of, all sorts of allegations in the last two weeks about how, whether the ANC or not, marched to attack Abbasi al Basim John Dollar in Kennedy Road in Denver. Whether it's true, whether it was the ANC or not, that, 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 that's a debate. But what you saw was the state also coming in to support the marchers who were armed to the hilt and to really suppress any alternative opinion. How does a community media journalist cover that event in a way which does not threaten their funding from the state? Particularly now that, in my view, I think that there are rather too few reformers in the state who are prepared to push the boundary, who are prepared to challenge the framework of neoliberal economic and social policies that produce these oppressive and rather backward conditions. Mashilo, are there reformers in the state mm -hmm. that community media can work with? In a dynamic relationship of struggle and unity, as Joey would say, whereby community media actually has the space to be the critical voice of communities in these dire conditions. The third point is related to this aspect of authoritarian populism, I'm suggesting is increasingly becoming bolder in the state. 
The third point is to recognize that despite the celebrated liberal constitution of our country, but this country is essentially a socially conservative society. Despite the red card demands, the working class of this country has actually won to an extent. But essentially, we are social conservatives. And this cuts across the dominant media, mainstream media, suggests, portrays conservatism as particularly African. But it misses the point because conservatism is produced by a society that does not give people opportunities for a decent life, opportunities to explore their potential in full. This conservatism can be seen in all sorts of ways in terms of values of society. But the important point I want to emphasize here, that, 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 that for me is most important for the community media center, is the meaning, the values, and the content of democracy. How thoroughgoing is this democracy? To what extent are the people real effective participants? in the democratic system, in the political system, even to the extent of having a democratic say in the structures of control of the economy of the country. But further, for me, democracy goes beyond numbers. If we were to vote on all sorts of things, women would not have reproductive rights. Less than gay people would probably be banned and so on. That would be the, what? the endings. What is it called? Capital punishment. Now, by mentioning those three things, I'm trying to say democracy is not just about numbers, but also about progressive values. In this context of crisis, there's normally an attack on those who are vulnerable, on those who are protected normally by progressive values. Where is community media going to be? if the crisis is going to worsen, as Brian is saying, if there's a possible erosion of rights, if there's a possible erosion of democratic values, and an assertion of the essence of social conservatism that describes our country. 